love it. I'm, I feel like I'm the only guy that is against the app. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the that's the perfect segue because we are live and drunk on <laughs> social. So, so for those of you on the back end in Zoom, welcome. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the chat. We're, uh, we will definitely be monitoring that. For the rest of you, you're going to be catching this live on Facebook or maybe later on Facebook in the Drunk on Social Facebook group where we are going to be talking to Mr. Ed Stulak about why Clubhouse might just be a big waste of time. And let me preface this by saying we just had the webinar on Monday and Tristan and I don't really take sides. Like we're not, we don't politically take sides. Socially, we don't take sides and uh, we're not going to take sides here either. That's why we're bringing Ed on because he's written very loud about his opinion about Clubhouse. And I'm going to be honest with you, Ed. I'm just going to call a spade a spade to start this thing out. This is my prediction. Ed understands social media. He's doing it for the engagement only. You tell me why you have been so loud about why Clubhouse is stupid and you should be spending all of your time on Instagram. Clubhouse, first of all, I, I, I got to say, I'm not a hater. I don't want to be a hater. I don't want to be considered a hater. I don't want people to look at me like I'm pessimistic. This is coming, everything I'm about to say on the show tonight is coming from a guy that has been in social media now for a decade straight, dissecting social media, the apps that work, the apps that don't. And I've seen trends. I've seen things on the rise. I've seen things that have not gone so well either. Clubhouse, why am I not a fan of it? Honestly, because everyone else is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a fad. That's what I personally believe. Why I think Clubhouse is a fad, though, right? I have, to, I have to back my statement. The reason why I think Clubhouse is a fad is because I've experienced a very similar concept about four or five years ago. I don't even remember when. And it was, a, it was an app called Pokemon Go. Do we remember that? <laughs> yeah. Right? Pokemon Go was amazing. It was fun. It was trending. It was popular. It went viral for a whole whopping two weeks. And then it died. And I personally see Clubhouse right behind that too. The reason why I say that is because everyone's talking about it. The marketing piece behind it all is great. I have to applaud Clubhouse. You know, here's, give me an invite. Everyone's talking invite, invite, invite. It's making people scratch their heads and saying, why, what's this invite? How do I get one? I want to be a part of it. Me, me, me. Until everyone else gets, a, gets the invite. And then they get in there. And then they really experience it. And wow, this is so valuable. This is amazing. I'm getting to listen to these experts speak about social media, talk about real estate, talk about branding, talking about marketing, talking about dating, talking about whatever it might be, right? Experts. However, how long is that going to last for? Right? Yes, yes, that is my next point. Thank you, Jeff. That is my next point that I'm about to touch on, is everyone is going to start thinking that they're experts. <laughs> Just like Instagram has influencers and models, everyone's going to think that they're a speaker now because, oh, I spoke on this in this room. You know, I got to shed my light and my two cents on this and that and and Black Lives Matter, and why racism is this, and politics, and science, and God knows what other subjects are being talked about on this app, but people are such experts in them. I, why would I spend, personally, as a consumer, as a user, why would I spend two hours of my time listening to someone that is only stating their opinion, and then having other people debate it, and it's, I feel like it's just TV, it's another media for me to get involved in only for what to listen to people that think they're experts or think they know what they're talking about. If a gentleman like Gary Vaynerchuk or maybe Ryan Serhant or someone that we all look up to start talking, start a room, that's a different story. Do I want to listen to them? Sure. But where else can I listen to them on a podcast? One that has been, I don't know, just edited, modified, focused on one subject and one subject only where I know if I want something, I want a little bit of piece of nuggets and value. I know I can go get that on that podcast because that podcast is simply called episode three, how to grow your Instagram. And it's only 30 minutes long. I know I don't have to spend two hours waiting for that to be talked about. It's already formatted and edited nicely for me on a podcast. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's the other side of me, right? And I'm sorry for talking so much. That's, <laughs> so right. you guys That's why we have you here, buddy. <laughs> and plus, you give me a chance to finish my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> See, I'm planning it out for you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And the other half of me, right? Because I'm, I'm a guy that has pros and cons. I always look at everything with pros and cons. The other side of me is looking at Clubhouse like, okay, well, this is so unedited, unfiltered, that even an expert might say something and give up a very cool tip that they would never, ever give away because they're just kind of almost put in this corner, pressured into this corner from this room, and they kind of just talk about it and give it up. Not everyone is an expert with filtering out certain things, certain messages, right? So yeah, sometimes you're just going to start talking about things and oh shit, like I shouldn't have said that. I charge clients $10,000 about that topic, which I just gave away for free, right? So it's like, you know, I have these, I have this devil and angel on me, on my shoulders. Like, who should I listen to? Who should I, but you know what? My gut, just like it has told me over the past decade, which apps to stick on, which apps to grow on. It is telling me the same message. Do not go on Clubhouse. It's going to last for another few months, it'll be a fad, just like it has been over the past few weeks. And that's that. It'll be done with. Yeah, you might be right, dude, because one thing that people don't know about, because it's so new, people are just learning everything, that uh, the two the two creators of Clubhouse were running Clubhouse for a few months on their own. That was the staff. And now, with everybody on, with they got over a million people on, their staff is still only nine people, right? That's insane. That just tells you, like, are they even positioned to grow more than this? So very, very good points that you bring up. And I wanted to point out, too, and so Sandy's got some opinions. She's in, she's on Zoom here and and all really good points, which I I actually read this, Sandy, to say, A, you've experienced it. B, you're kind of against it. Uh, and you're saying it right. Like she even says, like top producers bragging about their systems and then it becomes brokerage recruiting. I'm not going to name names. You can figure that out one on your, yourself. Um, and unless you're trying to get followers on other platforms, it can be a big waste of productivity. And I 100% agree because the content, most of it, not all of it, because we've learned Sandy. So if you ever go to some of our rooms, we are organizing our content. Now we're keeping them to a certain specified time. We're treating them like webinars, right? But you're right. If they don't have good mods, Tristan, I've learned this, people just ramble and talk about themselves. And instead of you say, hey, hey, uh, Ed, come up, come up to the stage and ask us your question. And you're like, yeah, hey, I'm Ed and I'm from New Jersey and I'm at with Remax and I'm great at this and I'm great at that. And I like to do this. And if you want referrals, send them here. I'm like, dude, ask the damn question, right? Um, that is what is going on. So Sandy, this is all very, very good feedback. Or, and she also says during quarantine, and she's right, this is filling a void. For most people, this is filling a void. This is like a glorified virtual breakout room where people are at a conference. Yes. And the, the only thing I will say, Ed, the only thing I actually I agree with everything you say, by the way. Uh, the only thing I will say about it, though, is that the difference between listening to a podcast with Gary Vee or Grant Cardone, let's call it Grant Cardone because he lives in there, is that you could actually <laughs> get on stage and ask a question, which you're not going to get unless you pay shit tons of money at one of his conferences, right? You're not, you don't, you just don't get him. You're not going to get him. Or I yeah. told Tristan the other day, I went on one because I saw um, Glenn, uh, Glenn Stearns was in a room. He's the founder of Stearns Lending and he's a billionaire and he was on, you know, some, he was on a TV show. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this is cool. I want to go hear what he has to say. That is a good reason for it. But so anyways, I wanted to, I wanted to share what, uh, what, uh, what Sandy had said. So of course, of course. And just to go off of that, that's, that's exactly why I see the value in it, right? I don't want to talk badly about it. It's just my honest, true opinion is that Clubhouse, the cool thing about it is, yes, you can listen to some speakers that would charge an arm and a leg, and you can hear them in a room, you can hear them talk about things. Hence why I said those are the credible people that I wouldn't mind listening to. However, Clubhouse is so open right now, and it's just, it's open for everyone to go ahead and speak, I know we all say that everyone has a voice and everyone has an opinion, but some aren't meant to be heard. It's as <laughs> simple as that. Sometimes you just don't need to hear other people's opinions. And I feel like the, the stuff I say is just like people want to say it, but they don't say it. Another thing that I'll say that probably you haven't heard of yet is uh, another, I'm going to go against clubhouse right now too, right now I'm hooking it a little bit. Um, another reason why I don't like clubhouse is who the hell in their right mind thought we should make a person the icon 
of Clubhouse. That that's genius. Yeah. Who said that? And who agreed to that? Show me another social media account or a social media app that has a person, a face. This is for what reason would Clubhouse have a little guy with a guitar? For what reason? There should be no reason for it to be so focused on one thing. It should be a logo. It should be an icon. Just like Instagram has a camera. Just like Twitter has that little bird. Just like Facebook has the F. Show me another social media app that has a person. It should never be a thing. So I don't like the way that they've you know, focused in on one area only, right? Not getting into politics. Mm -hmm. um, I posted on Twitter. I said, the, social, the, the Clubhouse app icon is straight dumb. And I put a little smiley face to it. <laughs> Did that get a lot of love? You know who reached out? Clubhouse. The guy that is on that icon. No way. He reached out and he gave me the little uh, shoulder lift uh, emoji. No shit. That's said, funny, dude. You know what? If you can connect us with him, we'd love to have a webinar with him. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I, I probably will. I, I don't think he likes me right now. So I don't know how that will go. But I, I, mean, I know these uh, guys on, on drunk on social, but Ed, I, I got a, I got a piece for you here from the Facebook group because we're also running it live in Facebook. Jerry, Jerry Weaver. Let me check that out. Hold on. Oh, shit. That's so funny. Bomani, huh? Hit him up, dude. Hit him up. Message nice. him. All right, Ed, we got a question from Jerry Weaver. He's a friend of ours. And he says, this is in regards to your earlier statement of Pokemon. He says, I think that Pokemon Go separated people and caused people to bury their face in their phone, but Clubhouse connects people, he says, in my opinion. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Because he has some, some sense in that. I, I agree with part of that, right? 100%. No, and then you're absolutely right. And I'm not talking about the science or the psychology of the app itself. I'm just talking about the concept of it being a fad. I'm talking about the concept of everyone and their mothers and their dogs talking about one thing that they love so, so, so much. And it being a trend, it being a fad because it did die out very quickly. And that's just the psychology that I'm seeing behind the point of a fad. What is a fad? A fad is a thing that is on the rise. As fast as it goes up, it goes down. I mean, this is what we've learned in science class, is it not? As fast as something goes up, it goes down too. So this is why I'm thinking, when did Clubhouse become a thing? Like January 3rd? All of a sudden, we're, what's, what's today? January 14th? I personally do not see Clubhouse la making it past June 2021. That is my prediction. June 2021, it has another six months to live. I don't think it'll go far. The reason why I'm thinking June, and that's a little stretched out because I, I think it could go even sooner, but I'm giving it some time. Uh, the reason for it being <laughs> it a little bit of time, a little bit more time because it does have value. It honestly does. But same thing, just like podcasts was a, was a huge rise, huge trend. Everyone wanted to create a podcast to the point where everyone made a podcast and then you didn't know who to listen to. Why would I personally listen to Joe Schmo's uh, podcast that he just released two months ago when Joe Schmo is not credible. He's not an author. He's not reputable. Why should I listen to Joe Schmo? If he brings on someone like a Ryan Serhan, like a very reputable name, will I listen to Joe, Joe Schmo? Yeah, maybe because now you have credibility attached to your name, to your podcast. So now I will start listening to you. All right. So, but the point is everyone wanted to create a podcast. So it's very tough to, for me, a consumer, a listener, a viewer, a user to decide who I want to listen to. It's like going to a library. I'm going to go to a library to choose that one specific book because I heard about it. I heard great things about it. I want to learn about that subject. I really want the, the cover looks pretty cool too. So I'm going to go ahead and check it out and I'm going to pull out that book and then I'm going to walk out. Everything else in that bookstore, I'm not interested in. I don't want to see it because I'm focused on that one thing and that one thing only. So right now, if I'm looking at this entire bookshelf of podcasts and these apps, I'm going to choose the one that I want to be on more so than others. And right now I'm looking at Instagram. I'm looking at TikTok. YouTube looks pretty damn good. Twitter, eh, it's kind of just getting dust on it. Snapchat, that thing fell off the shelves. I'm looking at everything else at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is kind of like peeking at me. It has a pretty cool cover, but it's still not attractive. And now Clubhouse is just kind of in the middle of this. I feel like Clubhouse is on the 
the, the, the shelf, the discount shelf, like, Hey, look, like we're, we're on a discount right now. We're the best book. Just like, come get us. That's my perspective of this. All right. So, so with that, where would you suggest that people go to instead? Would it be Instagram? Would it be TikTok? What, what would you say? Hey, go all in and sit on this. Before you answer that, I want to, I want to just give you an objection because I, I want to give you objections because I want to hear what your responses are as a guy who I know where you're going to say here. Cause I know what the answer is. Um, I follow you enough to know that the one, one of the benefits to being on clubhouse as an influencer, you included is that you'd probably pick up anywhere from 500 to 2000 followers on a certain platform, organic people that say, I heard something that you said that was profound. I have to click on your bio. I have to click on that link. I have to go there. I have to click follow. That's pretty intentional, right? Is that not a good enough reason to maybe stick your toe in the water? Totally cool. I love that. And that's a great reason to go on to Clubhouse is because of these rooms where you can go ahead and network with one another, exchange your digital business card, how I like to call it. But which business card are you exchanging at the end of the day? Is it not Instagram? So to answer your question, uh, your, your question, Tristan, is yes, focus on Instagram 100%. That is the digital business card. It will always remain for quite some time. I, I, everything dies. It's normal. It's just part of life with apps, with people, with anything. Businesses, they die. So if you go onto Clubhouse and you go ahead and just start ex- exchanging Instagrams, let me follow you, follow me back. This is Instagram's follow for unfollow concept through, through Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. People are going to go on there, right? Us three are in a room. I'm going to say, Tristan, follow me. I'll follow you back, man. All right, cool. Two months goes by. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to be like, why is this dude following me? And I'm going to check him out. And I'm going to be like, Tristan, I don't even know where the hell I connected with him on unfollow. <laughs> if you don't actually focus on that relationship and building that relationship, then that follow is, un- is just irrelevant. There's no point to having it. However, it's another follower. I get that. I understand. So yes, there is a plus to doing that. But again, I don't feel like that's the way that I should go about growing my following. The way I should go about my following is being, is being valuable on platforms like social media, like uh, Instagram, posting constantly relative content that makes people want to share it. Going onto Clubhouse and telling me follow me is like putting a ver- like a, a metaphorical gun to your head and say follow me, damn it! If you don't follow me, I'm gonna unfollow you, kind of thing, or I'm not gonna follow you back. I feel like it's forced. Let it be natural. Let it just come. If you deserve a follow, you deserve a follow, and you will get that follow. So, so my my explanation was not forced. It is organic. It's like happening because. So the, again, I'm just I'm just describing the way I'm using it, which is not it, which is still less than five. It, less than 5% of the audience has the same purpose that I have because I can actually gain followers that I can sell stuff to later, right? I'm not necessarily, I'm not a real estate agent who's focused on a niche market, a niche area. I want followers because I have businesses that this benefits, right? Just like a coach does. That's why this makes sense. I've never gone on club. In fact, I don't like going on clubhouse. I only go there to share. That's it. So unless somebody asks me to come up in a room and I can put it on my calendar, I'm not wasting my time. I I agree with you, Sandy, but I go there to talk about a topic that I'm, that I know I can wrap on. Right. And I just share my opinion. I share my thoughts, which is usually more profound than most because I have more of advanced, you know, just like you, right. We can talk about social at a very high level because we've done it at a high level. And so those listeners then go follow me because they just, they want to, right? Um, that for me is, it gives me enough reason right there. Uh, it's the credibility, it's the influence. But, and I say this for two reasons. One, for that reason. Two, because everybody else listening that doesn't have the same goal that I have or Tristan has, or maybe even Ed has, you don't need that. That doesn't matter to you. What Ed said is 100% true. Those 500 followers I've picked up, I'm not going to... I'm not going to sell them a mortgage. I'm not going to sell them a house, right? Now I have ancillary products. I might sell them though. And that's the difference. And that's the way you got to think about it. In my opinion, that's, that's just me being on your side of the fence here. Kind of. I, no, no, I agree. I agree. See, because that's the, that's the angel on my shoulder saying go on clubhouse because I too am a coach. I train real estate agents on social media and personal branding. 
And now it's a social media coach saying, don't go on Clubhouse. So it's making everyone turn their necks being like, why would you, why, right? So let me back that up now. Reason why me as a coach that I don't go on to Clubhouse is because number one, I know for a damn fact that the value that I know ain't free. I've spent way too much money to give that much info for free. So yes, I'm going to charge. Other speakers and experts and coaches, I just feel like it's coming any second now when it's be like, oh, you want to be my room? Oh, it's going to cost you 20 bucks to enter. Mm -hmm. We're going to enter into a stage of you have to pay to play. Yeah. Just like Instagram has entered that era of now you want engagement, you want likes, you want comments, you want exposure, you got to pay for it. Advertising, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, and then we'll give you exposure. Clubhouse is going to enter that very soon, if it hasn't yet. Uh, if you want to enter the room, it's going to cost you something. That's number one. Number two, I feel like advertising is coming in very soon as well, if it hasn't yet. Um, and overall, I just, myself as a coach, I just don't want to be in, in that type of room. I have different ways about going sharing my value. So this is just my perspective on me as a coach, wearing the coaching hat right now, why I don't even go on there. I will give value for free. Absolutely. 100% but I don't choose to do it on clubhouse. I just don't want to, I'm going to do it in a format of a TikTok video or an Instagram post or Instagram story or real, or maybe I'll go on Facebook or YouTube to post something about that. Mm -hmm. It's just not my thing. Not you my know what thing. this reminds me of Tristan is kind of the opposite of TikTok. Everybody resist like, so I don't, we don't know each other super well, only really kind of seeing each other on social probably. And I was a loud voice a year and a half ago about TikTok, And everybody was like, you're an idiot. And I was called an idiot for a good six months. Like you, you're stupid. This is for kids. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, eh, I kind of disagree with you. I, I feel like you right now. Um, that's how I felt then. And I think you were the same proponent of TikTok like I was, and you probably got called an idiot too. And fun. now all of a sudden everybody's embraced it and like, huh, there is some value there. We're like, yeah, no shit. Well, I've been saying that for a year. The reason, the reason for that two, two different demographic target right? Um, Clubhouse is only 18 or over, right? And when they released it, they released it to entrepreneurs and influencers first. In comparison to TikTok, it was for the younger generation. So it got to the older generation as a second phase. It's the opposite here. They haven't even opened it up to, to a younger generation. Gosh, That's what they don't. Yeah. Sure. And listen, if the younger generation does get involved in something like this, will it be cool? I think so. But again, I feel like it's just going to be a fad. It's going to be a phase. Like, all right, cool. Wow, this is the cool new thing right now. This is the best app ever for a little bit. And then it's eventually going to die out. Like I said, I highly, highly believe I will put all my marbles in the whole point of if it goes that fast, it will go that fast. Hmm. Clubhouse was just out of nowhere born and everyone is talking about it. We're in a week week plus into clubhouse being like a thing january 3rd was right around the corner and i feel like it got way too much hype and i honestly think it's going to go down that fast too that i just just my gut feeling now here's where two things i'm going to point out one thing i don't know if we remember engagement groups do we remember engagement groups like hey listen you know i have jeff tristan eric john jingleheimer schmidt we're all realtors Let's get into an engagement group so we can help each other boost our following, right? I'll follow you. You follow me. I'll comment on your stuff. You comment on my stuff. I like your stuff. You like my stuff. Engagement groups were a phenomenal way to grow a following online because you had, you had um, immediate and concrete support. You had those absolute confirmed seven likes, absolute confirmed seven follows, absolute confirmed seven comments. You knew you were getting them. I feel like Clubhouse is becoming that thing where it's like, oh, that's that's that cool thing to go and be a part of to grow your following um, until it's not. And I feel like that point is coming very soon where it's going to be like, ah, no, I have different ways of growing my following. I'm going to stick to those ways or now nah, I don't I don't want to invest three hours of my day to go and gain eight, nine, 20 followers. Nah, I would spend my time elsewhere. So that's my first thing I'll talk about. The second thing. The day that Clubhouse gets bought out, 
by another app, another company is probably the day that I'll look at Clubhouse differently. And honestly, my prediction, and I, I hope and I would love if my prediction came true for this one. If a company like LinkedIn reached out to Clubhouse and said, hey, we're going to buy you and we're going to implement your concept into our app. I specifically chose LinkedIn is because they, I feel like they need a re revive. They need to be revived. And I feel like if they bring an audio concept into their platform, all of a sudden LinkedIn has a new, new purpose to have people come onto LinkedIn. And now all of a sudden it's business professionals, which is Clubhouse, is it not? All of a sudden LinkedIn, this professional app, has a new purpose for people to go on there and say, Hey, let's exchange LinkedIn so I can hear you sometime, or maybe check you out, or maybe, you know, just let's, let's just be referral partners, as Sandy was saying before, right? Now, all of a sudden, LinkedIn has a new reason to connect professionally. That's, that's really good. Uh, well, Mike, do, you, do you want to uh, go ahead and email Microsoft and let them know what you think? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I think you're right. Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah. That would, if, if it went to LinkedIn, that would be huge for LinkedIn. It may be huge for both, actually. Uh, and if anybody can afford it, it's certainly LinkedIn. Look, um, if Zoom wants to get into the game, that could uh, that could add a different dynamic to, to Zooms, which would be interesting. I, I'd be interested in looking at that one, too. I love it. You know what, Sandy? Thank you, man. I'm catching up on your comments now, man. This is uh, you really, yeah. really good feedback. I think Ed and Sandy became best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy and I met in uh, Las Vegas at the R4 event. Uh, a year ago or so so yeah no sandy and i definitely exchanged words and, and you know perspectives on everything so I, I definitely like what she's saying too she's right and anything else you want to say in closing buddy at the end of the day grow your instagram it's very important to to grow a following on that platform i really highly believe in it it's it's an app that i also believe is going to die one day but not anytime soon it's here to stay it's definitely going to improve over time. And I think it's that one stop, one stop shop that people never knew they needed. I usually <laughs> don't like one stop shops. I'm not a fan of them. It's like, I, I want this there and I want that somewhere else. But Instagram has proven me wrong a few times before the day that they stole Snapchat's idea with Instagram stories, the day that they stole Pinterest's idea with saving bookmarking, the day that they stole reels from TikTok, the day they stole YouTube's IGTV, it's like, damn, I have almost everything that I possibly need or want. I can kind of get it on Instagram. And Instagram hasn't done it in an annoying way. They did it with reels where I was kind of pissed off. I was like, come on, guys, like you, you are just salty now. You're taking TikTok's idea that soon, that fast, didn't look professional or organized. And I wasn't a fan of it then, but Reels has improved ever since then. Reels has definitely improved. It's giving people that organic traffic that TikTok gives. I just posted a Reel the other day. I do not ever get more than 6,000, 7,000 views on videos on an IGTV or maybe just a quick uh, video that I post, right? I don't ever get that on Instagram. Instagram's new whole ratio thing is like for every 10 followers you have, you're lucky if two people see it, you know? So... With the reels though, I feel like it's giving you a vast majority of exposure, just like TikTok does. Mm -hmm. You can have 10 followers on TikTok and your video can hit millions of views. Instagram is kind of doing the same thing. That reel I was just talking about hit 16,000 views. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I think it's, it's still growing. It's still being exposed to my followers, to people who share that video. Anyone who shares that video on, an, on a story Anytime, who see, uh, anytime someone sees that story, that counts as a view, yeah. as it should, as the analytics should go and justify a view as a view. If you view a story, it's a view. If you view a post that is shared on a story, it doesn't count as a view or a like or anything. Yeah. Not in the real case, though. So. Yeah, I, I will say two things before we wrap up, Tristan, is, is one, um, my opinion, Reels, you're right. I mean, Reels, you should be posting them because they're, Instagram is, is lighting you up if you do in a good way. However, real sucks compared to TikTok. It's not even close, not even, not even in the same arena as TikTok when it comes to the editing. I like TikTok ed because of the content creation piece. I, the platform's cool, but I like creating there, bringing them back to the other platform just because I can create more 
awesome stuff, right? You know that. Um, I have one question for you, uh, just to follow up, then we'll finish with this, uh, unless Tristan has anything, which is, I, I, I don't want our listeners to take what you say out of context. Instagram will die. Clubhouse will die. Like what I interpret that to mean is that you shouldn't vacate social media because it's going to die. It's going to evolve. It's going to change. And so you should always have your finger on the pulse, which is one of the reasons why, and I think I can speak for Tristan, why we jump into Clubhouse. We jumped into TikTok and we'll jump into the next one no matter what, because we just want to test, 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 test. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, I love what you said, dude. I mean, I think, I think if you're right, it's going to gain you a shit ton of credibility. And if you're wrong, everybody's going to forget it's the same thing I said about TikTok. You have nothing really to lose. Um, I cha- actually, and I said otherwise to Tristan, now I changed my mind on that. I think you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Um, and so good for you on that because you know, it's worked for me too, when it came to TikTok. So when you say that and correct me if I'm wrong, but is that what you mean? It's not going to die, but Instagram won't be the bee's knees forever. It's going to be xyz social media platform it's going to overtake it it's just the way and zuckerberg's probably going to buy it it's the way it goes right um, we, we, don't, we don't know what's going to happen i'm just clearly stating my opinion i could be completely wrong and i might look like a fool it's just my opinion right you have investors that'll go and take their money and invest into new york when well, we could have said dude chicago is blowing up why would you spend your money in new york well because i have a feeling that new york is the better place i just i believe instagram is my new york and I believe in it. I know it will continue to grow. I want to put all my eggs into that basket because I love it. That's where I'm growing connections. That's where I'm building my community. That's where I can be as authentic as I possibly can be. That is my home. Until it's not, I get it. I totally understand it. Oh. That's why I spread myself out everywhere else. That's why I'm on Twitter and Snapchat and LinkedIn and here. And I'm Clubhouse. I am on Clubhouse. Don't get me wrong. Are you? I want to be I, I everywhere. Know. Yes, I am on Clubhouse. Absolutely, I get a test. You want to do a you want to do a Clubhouse next week? Other <laughs> people that reached out to me and said, "Ed, I want you on my Clubhouse room." I'm like, "Oh shit! All right, let's do it." Dude, good stuff, man. Let and let's do a Clubhouse anyway. Oh, geez, let's do it. I'm in. Let's go. I'm in. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. Dude, we appreciate you being on today. This is good feedback, man. This is for our listeners. This is the stuff you need to hear because all you hear is that it's the new shiny, you know, object and we've got to have it. We got to have it, which is why Clubhouse has done an amazing job. But now you heard it from somebody who says, eh, you may not want to waste your time. And sure. he's got good. This is good feedback, brother. This is really good feedback. We appreciate you, man. Last, last two seconds for the realtors that are watching. You know, I, I was just, it uh, just came to my mind is that for the, for coaches, people that are actually really, really involved into social media like us, is not it, we're, there's not too many of us. There's a lot more realtors. The real estate professionals listening to this right now, go everywhere where you can gain value and knowledge. You're not trying to grow a following. You might not be looking to become the biggest brand, biggest household item in the world. You might just want to learn how to be on the platforms that will bring you organic traffic that you can convert into business. At the end of the day, I feel like this is why we are on social media is to, yes, be connected, be social, however, gain business out of it. So right now, go wherever you possibly can be, but don't be discouraged because a new app is welcome to the social media world where you're like, oh shit, now I have to learn everything brand new again. Oh my God, I I have to prospect. I have have three listings tomorrow. I have this and that. I can't learn a new app. For the realtors that are watching, don't be discouraged. It's okay. If Clubhouse is for you, God bless your soul. Please be on it if that's valuable to you. But if it's not, don't don't think you have to learn a brand new social media app to crush it in the social media world. Nah, listen to guys like Tristan. Listen to guys like Jeff. They know what they're doing. So, uh, guys, I just applaud you too. Uh, wherever you guys are at, you know, Clubhouse or TikTok or here, you know, I, I appreciate you guys, and you guys definitely know a, a thing or two as well. Great so, information, dude. I, I loved it. Let's jump on a clubhouse, buddy. <laughs> I'll see you in clubhouse temporarily. Uh, that's right. <laughs> you can miss we'll, we'll be pinging you, brother. Thanks, man. We'll talk soon. Thanks, guys. See you, man.